Hi, this is Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextra Gunfighter. This is my third, I picked it up off of eBay, my third Weaver V3 1x3x20 uh, very low powered variable optic scope. Now why do I like this Weaver V3 so much? Well, it's, uh, it's, it is tiny, very compact, uh, weighs only uh, uh, stats, uh, the weight is 8.5 ounces, uh, my scale it shows is 8.3 ounces. It runs very nicely with very low rings, and uh, which keeps uh, your saddle height, you can run a minimum saddle height between the optic and your Picatinny rail, or whatever, however you're mounting it. What I really like is uh, it's variable power from one to three. So at one power, you can shoot uh, with both both eyes open, and the scope kind of blurs out like a ghost ring, like a ghost ring rear sight, as the brain combines the images into the stereoscopic perception. An illuminated reticle would be nice for a bend and aiming concept, but probably not worth the added bulk and weight. See my video, Gunfighter Physics, about, uh, about bulk and weight. <coughs> the little scope stands in stark contrast to the modern obsession with high magnification and big tactical turrets. Mostly for shooters who think they can, by buying magnification, and thereby improve their marksmanship. But like Rob Leatham says in regards to pistols, aiming, even with magnification, is useless if you jerk the rifle or pistol off a target. Natural point of aim, steady hold factors, turkey neck cheek well, exaggerated C-shaped trigger finger, thumb to the side. Without these in the field marksmanship fundamentals, seeing the target with the 20x magnification is pointless. There's an old test we do at Project Appleseed called carding the sights to test for these fundamentals. Ask your local Project Appleseed instructor what that entails. It's probably not what you think. Anyway, so for, out to, for use out to say 500 yards, 3 power or 4 power is, uh, is adequate for the rifleman who has the fundamentals down. I do like turrets that can be re-zeroed and have after their, you know, with their adjustable caps, you can reset the zero so you can refine your zero when you click uh, one direction or the other. Uh, that's kind of cool, and of course this doesn't have that. These are uh, just uh, nice clickable. These are very. Uh, uh, the last two of these I've gotten have had very distinct clicks. The first one I own a little, a little bit mushy, but these are really, really distinct clicks on these now. So, really liking the. The two that I've gotten off of eBay lately have been really nice. Nice. Yeah. Easy to click and very distinct click. Uh, quarter minute of angle per click. <coughs> so anyway, this little scope has been discontinued by Weaver. Uh, it has a... What, one other thing is it does have a... Uh, it's Japanese manufacturer, so Japanese glass very nice glass clear all the way out to the edges uh, no distortion uh, picks up light pretty good even though it's uh, pretty small on the objective um, you can you can find these on eBay occasionally for about $200 uh, I'm not aware of any alternatives maybe uh, someone can add in the comments if they know of any alternatives that are similar to this Weaver V3 say a very low powered variable optic of optic of 1 to 3 power maybe 1 to 4 power that's very compact and with very good glass and not of Chinese origins you know, for me, the ACOG is my favorite optic, but the, the V3 is a pretty adequate alternative. It is certainly cheaper and much, and much lighter than the conventional AR-focused AR -focused LPVOs that are, seem to be everywhere. It is ideal, especially for rifle stocks that place the eye low above the bore. That is, stocks that are kind of optimized for iron sights, so kind of a typical typical straight stocked rifle. 
<clears throat> From my ambidextral gunfighter perspective, the ACOG is perfect for ARs. It sits at just the right height, but the V3 is perfect for my straight stocked iron sided rifles like the MVP, the uh, uh, Ruger 1022, the Marlin guide gun, and coming soon maybe the Tika T1X. And on these rifles, it will fit in most ATV, backpack, or rifles or, or saddle rifle scabbards. So with that low, sitting low over, over the rifle, not standing up so proud, so tall, it uh, will fit in most scabbards. And that's, that's nice. Also, it keeps your weight low so that uh, you don't have a lot of weight added on top of the rifle. That makes it want to tip and roll over. And for those who venture far afield and must carry their rifle much further than from just the back of the SUV to the shooting bench, the V3 is probably up to the task if you are. It's Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextral Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.